marked it. Okay. Hey everybody, this is take two of this video. This is the besties back again. We are here to do a collective reading. Um, this is for the energies surrounding this very powerful day. Now we tried to come and do this video yesterday, but for whatever reasons, and there's no such thing as a coincidence, I firmly believe that, but for whatever reason, we got interrupted in the middle of the video and I had to pause it and I came back, forgot to unpause it and kept going with the video, the reading. And so I didn't get the messages didn't come through. So we're here to do it again because it's that important to me. So I do have a live. Oh gosh, that's hard to see. I have a live lunar eclipse happening right now, and I've got that and some music going off here in the side. So, can you see that, Bestie? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. So, I do not own the rights to this. This is coming from uh, a channel. It's live streaming. I'm not even exactly sure the name of the channel. Um, but, anyways, it's I do not own rights to this. So, please do not copyright me, YouTube. <laughs> So I'm having one of those days. I know that it's partially because of the energies that are stirring around right now. Um, but I'm having a very uh, low vibrational, low energetic day. And I'm trying to bring that back up. So I've got some ashwagandha. And well, this is green tea, ashwagandha, and it's lotus tea all mixed together. So I'm drinking that, hoping to get a little mental clarity out of that. And then I've got my bestie here. Who's helping me as well. I'm going to turn you so you can see me. There we go. You see me? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so do you want to say hi real quickly though first? Can you see it? Oh, you can't see it? There you go. See it? <laughs> okay, just... Just so that we want to make sure that Shirley got to do her greeting. Okay, so today is a very powerful, very powerful day. This is the day of... Hold on one second. <laughs> yes, it is one of those days, so bear with me, please. My lighter went out. So this is the day, uh, this is the 5-5 five, five portal being the fifth month and the fifth day and a full moon. We have a full moon, it is called the flower moon happening tonight. We also have a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. This is the third lunar eclipse in Scorpio and the final lunar eclipse in Scorpio for two decades. So we won't see another lunar eclipse in Scorpio for 20 years. Hopefully we'll still be here. And... <laughs> Um, but, um, between the full moon, the lunar eclipse, and it being the five, five portal, this is a very, very powerful day. The energies are, this is a portal. Today is a, a huge day for a lot of people. I think a lot of people out there intuitively I'm picking up and I have been for several days that this day is going to be a kind of like a grand rising for a lot of people out there. So there's going to be people out there who have been kind of experiencing these symptoms of an awakening. They're starting to notice uh, repetitory numbers. They're starting to notice that the things they're thinking are coming true around them. They're starting to pick up on other people's emotions. You're feeling your intuition starting to come in. Um, you're being drawn to things you've never been drawn to before. You're letting go of programmed belief systems that have held you back for so long. Um, these are the beginning stages of an awakening. And right now the whole planet's undergoing a mass awakening. But I feel like today, the energy surrounding today, especially at the peak full moon, those energies are going to pop everybody's third eye open. People are going to make leaping bounds of progress in their ascension process and their awakening process with this energy. So that is my feeling on this. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of uh, Palo Santo. And then I'm going to do a little bit of sage. Because I'm asking in this here and now moment that only beings of love and light, high vibrational beings of love and light, 
are to come in and share your energies with us and bring us some beautiful, clear, precise, useful messages for the collective. And only high vibrational beings of love and light are allowed. I do feel like the dark forces are going to be in full effect tonight, trying to bumble everybody up who's going to be making these leaps of advancement. So I do feel like we definitely, definitely, blessings, bestie. Blessings, all of you beautifuls out there. I do feel like we're going to be, uh, some people may actually go under attack. Um, some people may actually be getting brain fog, be getting low energy, um, confusion, forgetfulness, uh, feeling just off. That is all the dark who are attacking those of us who are experiencing our awakening or are or progressing in our ascension process, those those dark, low vibrational energies, they want to stop that from happening. So there, there's going to be some really wonky stuff. There's going to be some over-emotions, over-reactions, maybe under-reactions. Um, people are going to be stuck in their heads today. Um, people are going to be grumpy. People are going to be forgetful. Uh, it's going to be that kind of a day. On the other hand, on the other side, for those of us who are aware of these things and the possibilities of these things, we, there are ways that we can counteract this from um, affecting us in such a negative way. And I thought that it would be good to do this reading and to uh, tap into spirit and ask for some advice for the collective on how do we handle deal with walk through this very powerful, special and and just uh, uh, amazing time. This portal is huge. I know I've probably said that in the past. That, you know, this is a big full moon. This is a huge energy. This is the trifecta. This is a lunar eclipse, a full moon, which is a time for releasing. Uh, it the, and this is the five five portal, which I feel like at the, on this day a lot of the higher vibrational beings, uh, spirit guides. Um, our ancestors, the angels, they're all kind of getting an open doorway during this time to come in and really help us to make those advancements. So I'm going to take uh, this opportunity to go ahead and, and talk to spirit. We're going to use symbolism in my cards, maybe some dice, maybe some charms, and sit and chat and um, see what comes out. So I think I'm going to start with two different things because I'm a little nervous about the negative energies trying to come in and influence this being such a powerful uh, message that's going to be coming through here from the higher ups. I'm going to go ahead and clear and ground the energy using my singing bowl first and we're, oh, I got to take my ring off or it changes the sound because it rests on my fingers here. So if you ever wondered, I don't know if you've ever wondered this bestie. When most people play a singing bowl, they set it flat on their hand, right? They ding it and they play it, just like that. Okay, for me, I have a hard time holding my hand flat. I've got MS hands, my knuckles are all very swollen and my hand cannot lay flat anymore. And as I play, it starts to curl up, which muffles the sound and it doesn't give the best effect. So what I do is I hold my hand like this I lay the bowl on top of it so that I have the less amount of surface area touching my skin. That brings the best vibration. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this, tap it three times, ding it, however you want to put it, three times, play it for a minute. So as I do this, close your eyes, um, go to your third eye and listen through your third eye. And listen through your heart. Pay attention to the feeling that comes into your third eye. The thoughts that come through your mind. And what you see through your third eye. And pay attention to the feeling in your heart. When you hear this vibration. Alright. Everybody ready? One. Two. Three. Now, I don't know about you, 
for you. But that definitely makes a tingling sensation happen within my third eye. Um, oh, you felt it on your nose. That's funny. Uh, so that does happen for me. I get that tingling sensation. I also get a... It, it is the weirdest. It's so hard to explain. I get a what feels like an emptying of negative emotion that kind of just drains out of my heart. I almost feel like my heart goes back to normal, if that makes any sense. Um, your heart holds so much uh, negative emotion or stress or, um, you know, uh, fear. Um, and I always kind of feel that dissipate away when I do the frequency. I'm going to do another one. This one, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to wait and do this one over my cards. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start by pulling a, usually I, yesterday I did this and I'm going to do it again today. Um, usually I pull a archangel to come and sit with us through our time, our meeting that we have here with each other. Um, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But this today, because this is kind of a special time, I decided instead of pulling an archangel, I would go a little bigger. And rather than limiting ourselves to just the archangels, I decided to, I'm going to go ahead and pull from a deck called The Keepers of the Light. This is written by Kyle Gray. So this is more than the archangels. This, and I know it's not archangel, it's archangel, but that's how I say it. Uh, this is more than the archangels. This is the keepers of the light. So this is the people out there, our ancestors, the people that walked before us. More than just the angels. This is all of the ancestors and the people um, who hold the light and the, like some of the most famous, well-known, um, I don't know if famous is the right word, but very well-known keepers of the light who are, uh, um, you know, special individuals. I don't really know how else to explain it. Um... It introduces you to the angels, the ascended masters, the gods, the goddesses, um, and it brings the powerful messages. So it's it's going a little bit bigger than uh, getting us just the angels. So let's go in and see which one of the keepers of the light is going to come in and kind of hang out with us uh, today during this reading. Um, yesterday we had, do you remember who it was yesterday? I could barely pronounce the name. It was. Yeah, it was a brand new individual I've never even heard of before. wish I could remember it, but the fact that I can't remember it makes me think that maybe it just wasn't the right one. So, um, I mean, it made sense at the time, but who knows. So, we're going to go ahead and pull again and see which one of the Keepers of the Light is the most appropriate for us. Ooh, we just about had one and for this reading. And that's too many. Okay. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and keep the one that flipped over. All the rest of them were upside down. So the one that flipped over kind of looks like me. And, and, okay, so about a week ago, I did a short video on YouTube where I showed, I was in front of a building and there was a crow that was up in the tree. Do you remember that? And this crow was talking to me. It was saying, hello, hello. And it was doing it for a while before I started recording it. But I was stuck standing at my car because my phone was going dead. And I was trying to edit a video. And I was plugged into the, because my phone was trying to die. So I was plugged into the court. So I couldn't really move. So I stood right outside my car. And I was there for a while while Brandon and Dean were in this building for an appointment. And I realized that this hello, hello, which sounded very human at first, was coming from a pair of crows. At first, I thought it was one, but it was actually a pair of crows. They were probably a couple who had a huge nest up in the tree that's right in front of the door. And they kept going back and forth from the top of the building to the tree, I think, trying to get my attention. So I did a video on it. And as I was doing the video... I was trying to get the bird to say hello so you guys could hear it. it said it very quietly one time during my video. But as I started talking to this bird and I was telling, greeting the bird and saying, hello, baby, I see you. I recognize you. This bird wiggled its way out to the edge of the branch and then kind of sat there and looked at me for a minute. And I said, I love you. And as I said that, this bird 
flew down and it was this high above my head. This bird flew down and dived above my head, literally like he was saying hello. So why am I telling that story? Because look at this card. We've got a full moon in the back. We've got a full moon in the back. We've got a girl that looks very similar to me and she has a crow on her shoulder. This is Freya. And Freya is the goddess of the phases and the cycles. How freaking appropriate is that? Totally. The me Go ahead. <gasps> wow, she had three different birds land on her head in her lifetime. The first one was a white dove in the middle of dinner, or I mean the middle of winter, dinner, the middle of winter. Um, I actually, Mandy, my, my friend Mandy, um, she has a channel, she has two channels. One's called Sapphire Soul and one's called His Sally My Jack. She had a dove living in the tree in her front yard and it... If, I don't know exactly when. I think she said a week ago they had some really bad weather and the, the dove disappeared. And every day she's been going out checking for it and it hasn't returned back. But that's what that reminded me of. So what were the other two um, occasions? A cockatiel. A cockatiel, okay. And a, and a green parrot. And a green parrot, okay. Well, that's amazing. They're, that's probably one of your spirit totems or your spirit animals is probably a bird. A bird. I know my, excuse me, I know mine is. Mine is an owl. So, but this is Freya. She is the goddess of the cycles and phases. And the words on this card says there is a beginning with every ending. Illusions, illusions are revealed and released. Are you kidding me? That is absolutely perfect. Look at the full moon. We actually got someone who slightly resembles me. And the crow. Amazing. Abs I'm not surprised. Thank you, Freya. I want to read about her, though. I feel like we need to. Let's read about Freya real quickly and see what we, we can find out about Miss Freya. Okay, Miss Freya. Freya, which means lady, Lady Luna, Lady Moon, is the Norse goddess of the moon and love. She is the twin flame of Odin, which my stepdaughter her dog's name is odin she is the twin flame of odin and a warrior goddess who offer oh i'm a warrior i'm an ms warrior ah! okay she is the warrior goddess who offers deep spiritual physical protection to those who call on her name <laughs> she will stand before you with her shield and spear you and keep you safe from harm. She works closely with moon energy and helps us recognize that life is a cycle that is always changing. She here she herself is the maiden and the mother of the crone. That's the um that's the crow. The crone. The crone aspect of all women and guides to see them the wisdom and see them the wisdom that these cycles bring. We all go through phases and cycles of growth. What? I was just saying, this is going to be a huge growth spurt for so many people. Um, we all go through phases and cycles of growth, and Freya is the energy that supports this. She has a raven spirit totem, which is said to represent her capacity to travel between heaven and earth. The portal between heaven and earth. What? Okay, one more. The extended message. A phase of your life may be coming to an end. What did I say? The full moon is about release. It is about you work your work your way up to this point. Now you've gonna went as far as you can in this cycle. It's time to let go and release and start a new cycle. You may have been desperate for change, but now that it's here, you could feel vulnerable. Know that the mighty goddess Freya will guide you. Illusions are now being revealed. What? So that you can leave behind anything is that is false. Step into your peaceful, warrior-like energy and welcome the changes you deserve. Tie up all the loose ends and take heart. This is an exciting time. What? That is so freaking perfect! Are you even freaking kidding me? What? 
Okay, we're going to put Lady Luna right here next to the third eye candle so she can hang out. She looks just like me. Are you kidding me? The only thing she's missing is she's got a nose piercing. She's got a nose piercing. Are you even kidding me? She's got a nose piercing. What? She's got a nose piercing. Oh my gosh. I just went and had my nose pierced. I've got this nose piercing and I just went and had my septum pierced. That is insane. Okay, this is a much better keeper of the light. I'm not saying a better keeper of the light. No one's better than anyone, but this is much more appropriate than the one we got yesterday. Much more appropriate. Th nothing happens on accident. Nothing. All right, let's put beautiful Freya right there. Freya, you are so welcome, and we are so appreciative of your presence. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think... Let's do it. Let's do a charm or two first. Okay. Let's see what kind of charm we can pull out. So I've got every charm you could think of. Shirley gave me a whole bunch of these. And I got a whole bunch of them from the Goddess Provisions. There's probably 200 charms in here. Some of them are duplicates. Some of them are variations of each other. But I have actually found a lot of luck in pulling out these little charms energetically. And all I do is I go in and I stir them around with my fingers them around my fingers and then without even looking I'll reach in and grab one or two and pop them on the table and we'll see what they say okay so we got the Celtic heart number one the Celtic heart has a um it has a, the circle of life is a symbol in it let me hold on one second I'm kind of far from the camera so there you go we've got a Celtic heart so what? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> she gave me a compliment on my butt. Okay, she's always complimenting my butt. She's always telling me she wants my butt. I told her, you give me some of your boobs and, and I'll give you some of my butt and we'll be even, Steven. Anyways. <laughs> That's why I love you. That's one of the reasons. Anyways, okay, so with the Celtic heart, I just feel like this is bringing to our attention that this is a heart healing process. That going through this very powerful time is going to be a heart healing process. And if you look at the knot inside of this heart, I feel like that's basically just pointing out that even if your heart is up is, is kind of in knots, even if you feel like there's some chaos going on in there, this is still a time for letting that stuff kind of melt away, release all of that, or let release it and let it go. We've got to come, we've got to come through this portal and through this powerful time with the most open mind and heart that you've ever had ever. Okay, I know a lot of people out there claim to have an open mind, claim to have an open heart. In the back of their mind, though, they still harbor these doubts, these questions, these, oh, I don't know if I believe that type attitude. You got to let go of that for a day, for today. Let go of that. Quit. Let go of any kind of judgment on yourself, on other people, and just embrace what feels right. Um, and let the knots and everything that's in your heart unravel and go. And that's what I get off of that little charm. Awesome. The second charm I pulled is, let me see, what is this? Grapes. Grapes. So with the grapes, grapes are also um, significant because grapes make wine. And what do they call wine? Spirits. Right? Right? Yes, um, it was actually a symbolization of Jesus's blood. I don't feel that with this, to be honest. Um, to be honest, I don't feel that with this. The, for me, the grapes, what I'm feeling off the grapes is the connection with grapes being an alcohol, uh, being something they turn into wine, which is an alcoholic beverage. They call it spirits. So a, a spirit is being brought into attention is what I feel off of this one. And then the last one we got is a key. This is a key to the portal. This is a key 
to a huge lifestyle change that's coming up for some people, a huge spiritual change. This portal is a key. It's going to unlock a lot of doors for people. Does that make sense? It's going to, it's going to, uh, it's going to take away. Oop, it's going to, Ooh, hold on a second. I just had two fall out that when I tried to move the bowl and they're significant. Okay. I got the dancing dolphins. Now dolphins, dolphins, especially in this symbol, dolphins signify Pleiadian energy or Lemurian Pleiadian energy. So I'm wondering if what this means is that there will be some Pleiadian, Lemurian, Lyran, Syrian. I feel like the higher vibrational, maybe ETs or the higher vibrational beings. I don't even like calling them ETs. I call them high, higher vibrational beings. I feel like they will be able to reach us better through this time. And the, the other one that popped out is a butterfly. And the butterfly is very significant to me because my butterfly on my hand is a symbolization of the fact that I every day continually to beat a disease that's supposed to beat me. And I use the power of my heart, my mind, um, and my open-mindedness and uh, my dedication to healing myself to get through that process. But the other thing with the butterfly that I'm picking up on is transformation. The butterfly is a symbol for transformation. That's what it is. That's why I choose it as my symbol for my MS. Because my M I had transformed myself from a very, very sick individual. I thought that my life would have been over by now. It, it, when Back when I was really, really sick, before I got off all of the pharmaceuticals and started going natural. Uh, but I have absolutely underwent a transformation. And I just uh, got a ringing in my ear. So for, for me, that's spirit confirmation. So um, this, this tells me there's going to be a lot of transformation taking place during this portal energy as well. So those were cool little messages in the, in the uh, charms. I just, I love them. I think they're so cool. Okay, the second thing I want to do before I go to the cards is I want to play with my divinary dice. Because I always have so much fun with those and I'm really starting to learn them very well. Where's my little papers? Hold on one second. What was that? My cheat sheet. I don't know what the heck happened to it. Did it go? No. See what happens when I clean my reading room? I lose everything. Okay, well, I'm just going to do my best uh, without... Actually, I really need those. Hold on one second. Where the heck did they go? I found my cheat sheet for my runes. I had to come in here and do a major cleanup in my reading room. And, okay, I found it. All right. This is not my original cheat sheet, but it will work. Okay. Okay. So let's check. Sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. I got to stop and take a quick drink out of my tea. Oh, it's so yummy. Okay. So let's start with the astrology dice. And I'm just kind of putting my energy into it a little bit here. Asking for my beautiful, unconditionally loving team of helpers to come in right now and bring forth some important, vital, and useful information for the collective. We're going to start with the planets. Let's start with the planets. I'm going to have to turn that over. Oh my gosh, do I have the wrong thing? No, okay. But I do. Dang it. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Sorry it took me so long, but I had to go looking for my cheat sheet, which I never found, but I found the original one. So, all right, we're going to start with, let's go ahead and start with planets. And I think that's on this side. Yes. Okay. So let's start with the planets. And what 
planetary energy do we need to focus on during this powerful, powerful trifecta day? Ooh, it went way over there. Wow, that like literally rolled all around and it's the sun. Okay, so we got the sun. The sun energy is that sense of self, that personality goes completely along with what I was saying. This is going to be a time of transformation, transportation, er, transformation. I can't talk. <sighs> this is going to be a time for transformation for everybody. We are going to use this energy to work on the self. That is absolutely right. It's about per the sun is about your personality. Uh, uh, the sun is also about material happiness. Um, the sun is about a joyous outcome. So for me, that's really encouraging that through this transformation, there will be a joyous outcome. And the sun is about success. So in this, this leap, this hurdle you're going to take in your ascension process and your awakening process, same difference, um, you're going to find some success in this. And it's going to work on your personality, your person. That's amazing. I'm going to leave that one right there. Okay, so let's go with the signs. What energy with the zodiac do we need to focus on during this time? Um, bring it through. Uh, guys? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? So we got Pisces which is intuition. Okay, so we got Pisces energy. That's actually my hubby's zodiac. Um, and Pisces is about creativity and intuition. So that's great. So there's going to be some, some success in the growth of your intuition and, the, and your creative juices are going to start flowing. And the last one we're going to do is numerology. So let's see what kind of energy we get with the dice regarding numerology and we got 12 okay 12 unconscious mind and past lives um for me i feel like what that means is that it, with this portal some of the gifts and the achievements that we made in past lives that we may not have recognized yet in this life are going to be brought back to us. I do feel like we will be anybody out there who is really, really int intuitive in their past life, who struggles with their intuition in this life. I'm just going to pop that open for you and bring, bring that ability that you worked so hard for in your past life forward for you again. Because all of the things that we've been through in our past lives are still with us. They lay dormant each time we come back in another life. Part of our journey is to regain those things. And more, you know, as we, we journey. So with this one, with past lives being brought up, it really makes me think that there's going to be some past life um, abilities, past life wisdom, past life stuff that's going to come through and open up and we will be able to regain that, bring it back. So that's beautiful. What a beautiful message. Okay, let's see. Let's go through the earth elements and see what element... This can also be like the tarot energies, which is the same as the elements, uh, the cups being water, the pentacles being earth, the swords being air, and the wands being fire. So with water element, that governs your emotions. With the earth element, that is regarding the physical aspects of ourself. With the swords element, that is, I mean, not swords, sorry, with the air element, it's swords and tarot with the air element that is our intellect and with the fire element that's the creativity in us so let's see what we need to focus on which one of those things do we need to focus on during this portal we got air okay so air that's your intellect that's your intuition that's knowledge that's wisdom that's inner knowing totally makes sense love that Okay, let's go ahead and look at the moon phases, although we know we have a full moon tonight. What other kind of moon energy or, you know, other kind of moon phase or lunar cycle energy do we need to focus on during this time? Just because it's a full moon doesn't mean we only focus on the full moon energy. There's other energies that can come in that, that still exist that have worked their way up to the full moon. Maybe it's something we need to release. Let's see. And we got the first quarter. I got to turn this over. 
All right. First quarter is challenges and taking action. So the first quarter hasn't quite happened yet. So what I'm thinking is with the first quarter, so after the full moon starts to go the other way, once you get to the first quarter of the moon, which is the next phase, the first quarter, you may encounter some challenges. Um, you may... Um, you may some you may have to do make choices and take actions that you've been putting off. Uh, this could be release, absolutely release. This could be opening your mind to new ideas that you never allowed yourself to connect with before. But with the first quarter, that's what I get off that. Look out for those challenges. Don't avoid them. Work through them. If you don't work through them, they'll come back again and again and again. So. Be strong, use this portal energy, this trifecta that we have with astrology right now to help you work through those those uh, those challenging times. And I feel like that will be very helpful. Okay, one more thing. We're going to look at the stars. We're going to look at the stars and see what number we need to focus on with the stars. Okay, and this is also another form of numerology. We'll see what we get. One. One is new beginnings. That's what one is. One is independence. One is determination. Uh, one is individuality. It is attainment. It is getting what you're going for, what you've been working for. One is new beginnings. It is starting something new and fresh, meaning leaving behind the old, bringing in new um Number one is the, uh, the, the energy of innovation, um, giving you that oomph to really just make those changes. And one is also the energy of leadership, meaning take the lead of your own life. That's what I feel. That's what I'm hearing in my head. Take the lead of your own life. Leadership doesn't have to mean that you're going to be the boss over anybody, although it could. More, I feel like that is taking leadership of your own life. So there's some of you out there who are letting other people lead your actions, letting other people lead you through your days by emotional, uh, in, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, um, In negative emotions, but just basically just being a dumping ground for other people's emotions. Um, mm -hmm. And you suddenly feel like you have to take take that into your own hands and fix it for them. And so rather than do that, I'm feeling like in a leadership way, you need to say, Hey, here, this is your problem to take care of. This is how I did it. It worked for me, but you need to find your own path. I do really feel that way. I feel, um, attainment means that, that these issues will be actually worked through. If you, if you harness and really use this energy, I really feel that way. All right. So I have different cards than I normally do in our bestie readings because of this special day. Um, I didn't pick as many as I did last time. But the first one I'm going to actually pull from is the Moonology Oracle. This is written by Yasmin Bowman. It's an awesome deck. But, it, you know, full moon. I might as well check out the full moon or the Moonology Oracle and see what kind of energy, uh, what kind of messages that... The Lady Luna has for us during this trifecta special, special portal magical time. It is really, really a special time. I feel like so many people out there are going to get clarification for things they've been rolling around in their mind. Beliefs they've been kind of uh, trepidatious about a, uh, um, going for or embracing into their life because they're worried about... Uh, uh, what people are going to think or say or that they're going to hurt this person's feeling or disappoint that person because a lot of us out here were, grow were, were raised in situations where we were, um, we were in conformed religions or conformed be belief pathways or controlled situations where we had parents that wouldn't let us be us, right? Um, who wanted to change us for what they thought we should be or were completely unacceptive of us for who and what we are. Um, didn't accept us and 
those things hold you back and keep you um, feeling insecure about your choices and your pathways. And I feel like a lot of people are going to be able to kind of overcome that and embrace themselves, their, their authentic self during this. But let's see what the Lady Luna has for us today in the Moon Cycles Tarot or Oracle. No tarot today, only oracle messages today. Oop, it went to the floor. As always, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, we got new moon in Libra. Guess who's Libra? Okay, so the new moon in Libra is about new cycles, new romantic cycles, uh, is what it kind of does. But if you see here, We've got the scales of justice. For me, I'm pulling balance. Libra is balance. Okay, Libra energy is balance, justice, equality, fairness, um, self-acceptance, um, balance, and, 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 and that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like uh, this is saying there's going to be a lot of us out here who are going to find that balance that hasn't been there due to energetic cords to old traditions, old conventional ways of thinking, old expectations of other people, old conformities that we were raised in from day one. And so I do feel like that's what that is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and re, where is it? Where is it? New moon in Libra, page 54. Page 54 adds up to a nine, which is a completion. And we've got a full moon. Synchronicities, guys. Okay. A new romantic cycle begins with the new moon in Libra. Give and take could, be, could well be the answer to whatever dilemma you're asking about. Compromise may be called for. It's time to start negotiating or even renegotiating. When the new moon in Libra comes up, there's a restart for you and for someone else. So some of you Libras out there may be experiencing a restart to uh, a dilemma that, or a revisitation to a dilemma that you've been struggling with. Um, and a new romantic cycle. So maybe there's some of you Libras out there who have partners who are not quite with you 100% in your spiritually evolving process, awakening, ascension process. I feel like this card is saying that with this 5-5 five, five portal, it's going to bring that into alignment. I feel like it's going to uh, bring a lot of a romantic by saying a new romantic cycle, that romance is going to come in when the uh, balance happens. Um, it's saying when the new moon in Libra comes up, there's a restart for you and for someone else. A new relationship could be beginning. Now, a new relationship can begin within an old relationship, right? Right? So, and if that's the case, the chances are that this will be a healthy and well-balanced connection, just like I was just saying. And anything you do after pulling this card, doing it in pairs is advised. So, whatever you do out there, if you walk up to your honey and you give him a kiss, do it twice. Uh, or you give him a kiss and you demand one back. Do everything in pairs. It's got to be a give and a take. It says... Um, so if anything you do after pulling this card, do it in pairs as advice, such as teaming up with someone in business or in your personal life. Libra is the sign of relating. And this card suggests that whoever is in the heart of the issue you're addressing is someone who will be open to take talking things through. I know somebody out there who's dealing with something and I know she's a Libra and I know she is feeling a little off balanced with her uh, second half. And I've already told her that I feel like this energy is going to bring about a change in that. So that goes very well with that. You know who you are. Uh, avoid being selfish. Um, it says it will not get you anywhere at this time. So to attune to the moon, it says reach out to someone and let them know you care. So today, guys, reach out to someone you haven't spoken to in a while and just tell them how much you love them. Okay, surprise them. Give them just make their day by doing that. Additional meanings for this card. Feel more, think less. It is about marriage engagement. A legal matter may go away or go your way. 
It says, pay attention to your appearance, but don't be all about appearances. So, you know, give yourself that self-care that you deserve, but don't be like, oh, I got to have the most expensive makeup and most expensive clothing, and I've got to look better than everyone in the room. That's not what it's saying. Pay attention to your appearance and that you give yourself that self-care. Libra is the sign of love and harmony, negotiation and relationships. It is the harmonious, kind, and luxurious, and always aiming for balance. Hello, that's me. <laughs> so when we have, yes, that's why I love you too. Um, it says when we have the new moon in Libra or any time you draw this card, there is a restart possible for anything and everything connected to partnerships, negotiations, appearances, and justice. Remember that Libra is depicted on a set of scales. This energy wants to bring back the equilibrium and harmony. I love that. I feel like that's going to happen for a lot of people out there during this portal, um, during this trifecta, the new moon or the full moon, the eclipse, the portal, all of that energy together is so powerful. Put your moon water out. Grab as many containers as you can find. This is powerful moon water. You will not be able to get this same kind of energy for two decades. Get that, get every container you have. If all you have is a plastic bowl, put water in it, stick some plastic wrap over top of it and stick it in the moonlight. Stick your crystals out there. Do it, do it, do it. Put them all out there. Today is so important more than any other. It's so important that you charge your crystals in this special, special moon, in this special, special energy. Put as much water out there as you can. You're going to use this water to, to nourish your body. You can use it to wash your skin. You're going to use it to feed your plants, your animals. This is, you're going to use it sparingly. Mix it with other water to, to put the energy in, in other water. But this is so, so important. Water holds energy. Water holds frequency inside of it. I was talking to Maribel, YouTube grandma, and she told me that she has went around her house and collected up every container she can find to do her moon water. And I was like, yeah, I'll just take a little page out of your book and do the same. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing. So I think I'm going to let Bestie pick. I do have the Rebecca Campbell cards here. Um, I've got the Starseed Oracle, the Work Your Light Oracle, and the Rose Oracle. So I was going to have you pick one out of those. Do you see that? It looks like someone up above me. Oh, Shirley's feeling a presence above her. Right there, a face. Only you're picking up on it this time, sister. I'm not picking up on it. Okay. That's meant for you. Yeah, yeah, someone, that's for you, because I'm not picking up on it. Usually when Shirley has a presence in her house and she brings it to my attention, I can tap into that energy and kind of pick up on who it is. Not always, but most always. I'm not picking up on anything right now, so um, I, I'm not picking up on anything right now. So I, I think that's meant for you, just you. You know, I don't always, I don't always feel everything everyone else does, but that's because it's not meant for me to feel it. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing, and I'm going to roll some. This is also numerology, but these numbers may be important for some of you guys out there. Take what resonates. Always just take what resonates. But these numbers may be important for whatever reason. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so we got one, three, and four on one side. That adds up to an eight. So we've got an eight. We've got two, four, we've got a seven, and we've got a six. So we've got a six, seven, eight. Okay, so I don't know if that is uh, significant to any of you out there. Then we've got a 15. We've got another eight, and we've got another eight. Okay, so, so eight's important. Eight isn't important. Okay, let's see. Eight, 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 balance. So the angel number, eight, 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 is balance. Uh, it, it means everything is falling into place as it's meant to be. That's amazing. Uh, eight is material satisfaction. Eight is authority, taking authority over your own life, power, ambition, giving, and receiving. And we've received that message a few times now, too. So very cool. 
So, you guys, the angels are telling us 888 balance. This portal, this trifecta we're going through is going to bring about so much balance for so many people. Just your inner knowing coming forth and you just instantly know something. Um, just that alone can bring a balance because you can feel off balance if you don't have all the information. All you have is part of it and part of you is wondering what this is supposed to mean and like, or if you're stuck, that's imbalanced. So I feel like that this, this is just going right along. Yes, it's going to be, there's going to be a balance that's brought out of this. So do we want to go, do we want to go forward and address the light workers first? Sure. Okay. All right, my turn. So I'm going to go with the Work Your Light Oracle. This is by Rebecca Campbell, one of my favorite deck artists. I have three of her decks. I've got the Work Your Light Oracle. I've got the Starseed Oracle and the Rose Oracle. I also have her new Oracle, which is due to be released in June, called the Healing Waters Oracle, also on pre-order. You know me. So, I have, I'm not even going to say, I'll tell you in private. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> okay, so what I'm asking right now for the light workers, um, just a beautiful message. What do the light workers need to focus on? The ones that are out there working their booties off trying to spread the love and light. What do they need to focus on? What do they need to take into consideration during this powerful time? What do the light workers need to take into consideration during this super powerful time? Okay. So that was too many. I just want one. Can I just get one main card to focus on? One main card to focus on. I might have to do a pull. Oh, okay. We got it. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay. I got two. All right. I got two. Now, do you remember what I was talking about with the little um, dolphins being Pleiadian and Lemurian energy? Okay, I got Lemuria. Lemuria! So they're popping in again. Lemuria is about creating heaven on earth. And on this card, it says, it's happening. It's happening. Okay, so Lemuria is being brought into our... our um, let me get, let me read about that real quickly. Lemuria is being brought into our attention. And this book is so weird the way it's set up. So let me find it. Lemuria 114. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this is about, these are called transmission cards, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Okay, so with Lemuria which is, I resonate with hugely. It says, Lemuria or Mu is one of the earth's lost lands where heaven really was a place on earth. A time before we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, the Lemuria life worked in harmony. We keep getting harmony, you guys. We keep getting harmony. Worked in harmony. All beings were seen as equal and we were deeply reverent to Mother Earth. I love that. That's one of the reasons why I really connect with Lemuria. We knew that a mosquito was no worse than us and the sun no better. Perhaps you too believe that heaven really can be a place on earth. Perhaps you are part of the transition team. I am. I'm claiming that. Who at soul level are devoted to creating this kind of harmony on the planet now. Thank you for wanting to do this work. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the state of affairs on the planet right now. Oh my gosh, that's so true. But you are now being encouraged to keep holding the clear vision of the future. It is closer than you think. You may be guided to hold the frequency of Lemuria in your own community, family, workplace, or within yourself. Hold that feeling of harmony within yourself as you go through this portal. It will make it so. There are hundreds of thousands who hold the codes of this ancient lost land and even Lemuria crystals. Thank you very much. I've got a ton. 
even Lemurian crystals that hold the codes of remembering that are beginning to rise all over the planet. It says, keep doing what you're doing. And remember, the only way to heal the world around us is to first heal ourselves. So what I'm pulling out of this, I'm going to grab my two closest Lemurian crystals. Whoa, and I dropped one. There you go, MS hands. Okay, so what I'm pulling out of this intuitively is balance, harmony. Um, hold that energy of that in your heart as you go through the portal and it will make it so. Also, I'm, I'm hearing that this message to those of us out here holding the light, those of us out here trying to help each other through the process of the, of the ascension and of the, the planetary ascension. Uh, also, I'm, I'm hearing to, to really hold tight to that close-knit community and, and draw on the power of each other to keep each other up. And working hard with working hard to bring the earth back to a place of paradise and i feel like with this portal happening that is absolutely going we're we're leaping towards that through this energy so there you go beautiful lemuria the second one i pulled is birthing a new age bringing new creations what did we get on the dice creation right creation uh dreaming a new world to be doesn't it look like she's standing within a portal look at the the rocks on the ground and the energy portal around her this says birthing a new age Yes, that was really interesting. Let me read this real quickly. Birthing a new age. Birthing new creations. We did get creation. Um, we we got, uh, what, was, what, what was the creation in? Um, I can't remember. But anyways, we did get creation. Birthing new creations or a create. I think it was in the dice. Um, also, dreaming a new world to be. Okay. I do feel like when the world, when our planet ascends into the 5D... And the individuals on our planet follow that pathway. Because there's going to be some people who stay back in the 3D. I don't know how long they'll survive. But if you are able to bring your vibration up enough to resonate with the 5D frequency, uh, I feel like when the planet does go through its ascension, that those of us who have uh, adopted or become that 5D frequency will remain. And even if it, it doesn't happen in, for another lifetime, it, it, I just that's how I feel. The thing that I see out of this, though, is that we've got a trifecta on this card. We've got a grid, an energy grid that's been made on the ground, which is three circles, trifecta, three circles that are going one and then one inside and then one in the middle. And we've got this individual who, by the way, has blonde hair, <laughs> this individual standing in the midst of an energy portal. And there's a star alignment. That's a trifecta with the star alignment, the portal opening, and star alignment is, is, is an eclipse in a roundabout way. The planets are aligning, okay? So an alignment is an eclipse. So this is bringing forward all of those things that are happening at once today, and it says that we will be birthing a new age. I fully feel that. I absolutely feel that. I've been talking about that with Natalie, how I feel like, a lot is going to change um, as a result of the energy from this day. Let's see if I can find... 92. Okay. 92 equals up to 11, which is justice and harmony. <laughs> very, very synchronistic this message is. One more page here. Come on, come on. I need, I need wet fingers. Okay. Birthing a new age. I'm going to read this one real quickly. Often our path is exactly the one that we don't feel prepared to walk. Walk it anyways. Often what is rising feels far bigger than what we could possibly. Often what is rising feels far bigger than we could possibly hold. Be a container for it anyways. That's what I was saying. Allow Go through the, this day through your intuition, through your third eye and through your heart. Contain it in there. Often our creations seem to have a wild, uncontrollable consciousness of their own. 
birth them anyways. Often what is ours to do is the very thing that most intimidates us. That's the dark night of the soul. That's letting go of things that are no longer serving our highest goods. Uh, that is holding on to people who are no longer serving our highest good. And the fear of not having those people in your life anymore. That's kind of what I pull out of this. It says, often what is ours to... Oh, be courageous and do it anyways. We are birthing a new age. Right now, we're in a transition period between ages. We're going from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And the process of allowing the old cycle to fall away, like I said, we're letting things fall away, and the new one to rise. Like driving in the fog and trusting the road will appear ahead, we need to release old identities and ways that no longer serve us. What did I just say about not serving our highest good? Using our intuition as a compass. Yes! You... You are a group of souls who have been incarnated at a significant period in history and have been preparing for this exact time. Dreaming a new world into being, uh, an into being, Magdalene sisters, daughters of Isis, essences, priestesses, witches, mystics, healers, seers, artists, midwives, visionaries, guardians of the earth, and storytellers from the past. This is the group of individuals they're talking about. It's time to give permission and space for what is beckoning from within. We are dreaming a new world into being. So what it tells me to do is this. It says, hold the card on my heart. You guys can just put your hand on your heart. I am open to surrendering to the creations that are wanting to be birthed through me. May I be of service in any way that delights the mind, body, and soul. Please use me. Please lead me. Please show me the way. Okay, I've got goosebumps from head to toe. I ask my spirit guides that every single day. when In the morning, when I do my spiritual rituals of my own, and I do my meditation, and I set my daily intentions, and I tell spirit what I want to get out of the day. I don't go and say, okay, I need $45 to pay this bill, and I need this movie to come on, and I need... To go purchase this from the store or no that's not what I mean by intentions my intentions are to be open and receptive to receiving healing for myself and to be able to actually give that healing back to anyone else who needs it use me to help others lead me to help others allow me to help others as I help myself and I say that every single day so that really resonates for me. Love that. Love that. Okay, so we're going to move forward. I was thinking it would be cool to do a... I haven't used this deck in a while, but it is the Untamed Elemental. And I thought I would pull it out just because uh, the moon, the stars... Uh, the elements on the earth that actually govern all of the stuff. Um, this kind of is like an archetypal for that. But let's go ahead and pull and see just what we get. I don't know why, 100%, but I'm being drawn to this deck. I didn't, I wasn't drawn to it yesterday. So maybe that's why the reading didn't come out yesterday. But can we get a beautiful message from the Untamed Elemental for the Collective as we go through the 5-5 five, five portal? new or full moon full flower moon and the last lunar eclipse in scorpio what should we take into account, account during this powerful time what should we oh there we go okay oh i've got them all messed up now okay so there's two of them oh my gosh Okay, so the first one I pulled is the waterfall. Waterfall is, water is emotions. Water, okay, so what this card means is to allow the emotions to flow out. Don't hold that water up inside. Allow it to, to flow out. Allow the emotions to flow. Feel them. Acknowledge them. Feel them. 
uh, let them go, embrace new emotions. Uh, but it, it, you need to go with the flow here is what this is saying. Go with the flow of this energy. Uh, uh, don't try to hold yourself back. If you get strange thought processes, just follow through them. See, see where they take you. Uh, the second card I pulled is the Phoenix. The Phoenix rises up out of the ashes victorious. We're birthing a new time here. We're going to rise, you guys. The Phoenix, very significant to me. My Phoenix is rising up out of the ashes and grabbing a hold of my dreams, which is depicted by the dream catcher here. So very significant to me. Uh, I had a situation take place in my life that absolutely could have broke my spirit 100% and taken my life at the, in, in the moment. And it did affect me for many, many years what happened to me. But I was able to rise above that. And when I felt like I finally had to the point where um, I no longer allowed that energy to control me in any way, shape, or form, I finally went out and got my phoenix because I felt like I had risen above all of the ashes, my life just burned down out of nowhere for me. And everything I thought that was, I realized was not. And literally my life was, like my life was flashing in front of my eyes. It was bad. It was a bad time for me, but I needed that time. I learned a lot through that time. And I was able to say that I rose from that victorious. So through all this energy, there's a lot of you out there who are going to come up out of the ashes victorious. I love it. That's beautiful. I'm not even going to read the book because I know exactly what those meant instantly. Okay, the next one. Do you want to do the Rose Oracle or do you want to do the Star Seeds? Star Seeds. You did pick that one yesterday. I know you really like this deck. I think I'm gonna, I might have to get it for you. Just because it's a good one. It's got the words on it for you. All right. This message is for the star seeds out there. Those of us in that group we were just talking about. The star seeds out there. What do we need to take into consideration as we move through this trifecta? What do we need to take into consideration? Ooh, I seen it pop out. Okay. What did we get? Let's see. Ta-da. We got two. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. What did I just say? This, there is a rebirthing taking place, right? The first one I pulled is the void. The void. The words on this card are stop, embrace. You are in a great cosmic womb in this moment. So right now, the energy is kind of holding us in what for figuratively is a womb and a rebirth thing is going to take place wow that's amazing and the second one i got was uh says you got the love so star seeds out there you've been bit, you've been holding yourself in this cosmic wound or womb sorry you you're being held in this cosmic womb because star seeds we are so special we have such a special mission here on this planet not everybody is like us. No, no, not a lot of people understand us. Uh, we're just now starting to come to a place in life where people are taking us seriously. We're being told to, it's time to stop protecting or uh, hiding inside this cosmic womb. We need to embrace what's going on right now and release ourselves with the, for this new rebirthing from this cos cosmic womb. And the next one we got is, you got the love. You got the love. And the words on this are codependency and boundaries. So we're being told that those are some things that we need to release. Now, star seeds tend to be very codependent because we feel like we have to fix everybody, right? That's codependency in a nutshell. So what it's saying is those are some things the star seeds need to release through this. We need to release that tendency to take care of everybody else and put ourselves last. Because that's what we're doing for sure. And boundaries. So also we're being told that we need to maybe put some new boundaries up for some of the people in our life. Uh, or some of the things. Or some of the places. Or some of the situations. Who knows. But there's some of us out here. Some of us star seeds 
who need to kind of refocus on our boundaries during this time. Now, it could very well be that so many people are going to be slammed into their awakening. I I'm picking up on this intuitively right now. Okay, my spirit guides are telling me that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to pop open. Their third eye is going to pop open. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to actually experience a little bit of trauma during this awakening because it's going to scare them. It's going to confuse them. It's going to kind of throw them into a situation that they've kind of been trickling towards but haven't quite embraced yet. And it's going to be overwhelming, okay? We as star seeds are going to want to run in there real quickly and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, I can help you. Here, do this, do that, do this, do that. And in the midst of that, we're going to forget about ourselves and our own process of ascension. So we will need to remember to have boundaries for those people who are awakening, who are going to come to us with a thousand and one questions and want to suck up all our energy and all of our time and all of our, our, uh, our love. So be leery of the energy vampires is what my spirit guides are telling me. Remember your boundaries, star seeds. That's very good advice. Very good advice. Okay, I'm going to do one more, bestie. I Either the Rose Oracle or the uh, Sacred Light Oracle. Which one do you think? We'll try the Rose. The Rose? Okay, so we're going to hit all three of Rebecca's decks on in this reading, and I am fine with that. This is a brand new deck for me. Uh, I recently ordered this deck just a couple months ago. I've never even really worked with it, but personally... Um, a few times. I actually had a very good friend of mine. She also has MS. She is my MS warrior sister. Her name is Andrea Wheatley. She has a channel on YouTube. Go check out Andrea Wheatley. Uh, she did a reading for me using these cards and the reading was so spot on. Now, my girl Andrea lives in Michigan. Okay. She is all the way across the country from me. We've never met in person. We talk on the phone, but we've never met in person. But we share a commonality that not everybody can understand unless you share it too. And that is having an, having MS. So we, we have each other to lean on when we're having issues because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're going to understand each other. Now, I can share my symptoms with my bestie. I can talk to her about what I'm going through always. She's always there for me 100%. And she's got similar illnesses. that So she experiences similar symptoms. But as much as I love her and as she loves me and the huge support system she is for me, she doesn't have MS. So she can't 100% understand some of the things I'm going through. So it's nice to have a friend out there who can. Anyway, she did a reading for me. It was so spot on that I purchased the cards. So that's where this deck came from. And then once I purchased them, I realized, wait a minute, now I've got all three of Rebecca's decks. And then shortly after that, I found out she has a new one coming out. So can't wait for that. That one's called Healing Waters. I'm so excited to get it. Okay, so this is ooh, a message for the collective. And the wild rose. Do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness. Be untamed. So in this card, I see three individuals. It looks like Two men and a woman, maybe. Two men two men and one woman. Anyways, it says, do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness and be untamed. So as we're going, okay, so collective. My beloveds out there. Bestie. We have been in, and we have been living a life of conformity, of, of reaching other people's expectations of us, of, uh, uh, maintaining traditions that were passed down to us from other generations that are not ours. They belong to somebody else. Uh, we've been living that life for a long time. Use this beautiful energy today to, to change your, your way of thinking about that. Let go of those traditions, those, those, those conventional ways that were pounded into your psyche. Uh, let go of those expectations that other people have on, of you. It's not their journey. It's yours. Do it your way. It says, do it your way. Embrace your own uniqueness. If somebody else doesn't like it, who cares? Do you think everybody out there is approve, approval of me that I, at 48 years of age, went and got a piercing on my septum? No, my husband didn't even like it. But it's me. I'm unique. I've never been normal or conformed, and I never will be. I do what I want to do. I embrace my own uniqueness, my own 
this is my body and I can adorn it however I want. And what I find attractive or what I find cute or what I find significant or what I want to do, I am going to do that. I have no problem doing that. You guys need to do that. My bestie is the same way. She embraces herself as who she and what she is. Although I do find that I have do have to give her advice sometimes because she's an overgiver. She's definitely an overgiver, people pleaser, wanting to help, wanting to save the world. And I resonate with that so deeply. The problem is, is we end up giving all we have and we have nothing left for ourselves. Then we get used. We get used and then we get resentful and then we drive people out of our lives. And they're sitting there going, wait a minute, you offered. You know what I mean? So we've got to be really careful with boundaries right now. That's amazing. We've got to be careful with boundaries. Do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness no matter what anybody else thinks about you. Going through an awakening, you're going to get lots of judgment. When you when your mind starts to open and you start thinking about things in a non-traditional way and and, and, and your uh, the expectations that other people have on you are not met and they start resenting you for that or holding it against you or whatever they do, this message right now is to embrace your choices, your uniqueness, your you-ness. And who cares what anyone else has to say because their journey is not yours. Their ascension process is not yours and it's not your responsibility. What is your responsibility is to share your knowledge, share your love, share your light, share the messages Spirit gives you to share. Uh, people can take it or leave it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But at least you've led them to the water. Now it's in their hands. So don't let them take more from you than what you have to give and leave you empty. That's what I get out of that. What about you, Bestie? That sounds exactly right. Yes, yes. Okay, we have one more, one more. I don't want this video to be too long. It's already an hour and 16 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this is the last one, and this is the Sacred Light Oracle. And I really want to do this one because this is the, the these are Ascension cards. These are ascension cards for the spiritual seeker. So those of you out there who are seeking spiritual alignment, who are seeking spiritual advice, uh, knowledge, that's what this deck is for. And it just, I don't know. I love the messages that come through it. A lot of times they resonate so deeply for me. Um, I just feel like this, this holds a, a pretty message in it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. What are we going to get? Asking my spirit guides to bring through a beautiful message of ascension for the collection. Or the collective. You guys are my collection. No. <laughs> the collective. Okay. It's right there. Oh. Language of light. Rediscovery. Humble wanderer. That means humble yourself from all of those conventional ways of thinking and expectations you have to humble yourself a little bit to let those uh, judgments bounce off of you communication L light language is about communication light language is the higher ups trying to speak to us that's their language okay just like speaking and talking is our language the higher light beings use light as language and rediscovery so, like I said, I feel like this trifecta, like I said in the beginning, I feel like there's going to be a rebirth, rediscovery. We are going to, things that happened to us in our past lives are going to come out, knowledge that we have inside us that kind of has been hidden since we've been, you know, reincarnated into another lifetime. We keep with us every single thing we learn and experience in the lifetimes ahead of time. They just kind of go dormant when we are rebirthed into a new lifetime. And it's up to us to find and regain and, and become aware of those things again and, and rebirth them. Okay. So this card is very much saying that the, this, this beautiful trifecta energetic day we're about to go through, we are going through right now. This day is going to bring about a absolutely going to be a bring about a rediscovery and the number on the card is 18 which adds up to a nine which is a completion and we've got the full moon which is a completion so there you go beautiful artwork yes. and doesn't it look like she's sitting in a portal mm -hmm. almost like she's in a bathing in water looking 
That's energy. That's energy coming out and surrounding her. It does look kind of like water. Yeah, and we got water energy earlier. Okay, guys, that's it for us. We are done. I hope that those messages resonated for some of you out there, helped some of you out there. I'm going to end this little um, collective reading. I guess it's not real little because we're going on 20 minutes. But I'm going to end it right now with one last beautiful vibrational frequency for you to take with you through your day. I'm going to ding together my yoga bells three times. So, and I'm practicing at this, getting better, so bear with me. <laughs> so we're going to go with one. Two. And three. That's the three for the trifecta. Sending you all love and light, the highest vibes. Bye, guys. You want to say bye? <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs>